Last week, I bought a safe, and I didn't know the combination. So, I tried cracking it every way I could think of. Eventually, I just built a safe cracking robot. All right, so I've got this boroscope camera, and I'm gonna see what's inside the safe first to make sure it's even worth getting in there. All right, we're digging through here. What do we see? Fur first, okay. First what? First security. Okay, first security, something bank related. All right, that's kind of cool. What else we got in here? Let's move this camera around a little bit and see what else we can find. All right, ooh, this looks interesting. Ver cent zero fifty dollars. Awesome. All right, let's get this thing open right now. First off, I'm not condoning anybody crack a safe in any illegal manner to get anything you shouldn't have access to. Just making sure everybody knows that this is for informational purposes only and is still super cool. And let's get to it. So I tried listening to the safe to see whether or not I could crack it, and I could not get it. I even went as far as getting a special amplifying system where you could hook this little probe up to it and get even nice and close and listen to the little clicks and whatnot. Still couldn't get it. Plus, I was missing some fundamentals on whether or not uh, I knew how the safe worked. So. Sparrow's Vault makes a test safe. And that test safe allowed me to learn how to manipulate safe locks. And I could do it when I had one or two combination wheels, I was able to open it up. But as soon as I had three, I could not get the safe open with three locks. So then it came down to what am I going to do? I can't get it open via manipulation, even when learning trying all the methods that people have for how to crack safes. So the only way left was to build a robot. Building a safe cracking robot wasn't easy, but it's a heck of a lot easier than entering every single combination by hand. But what did I need to do in order to build a safe cracking robot? Well, the first thing I needed to do was I needed to have something, I needed something that could rotate this knob and try every single combination and that way it could go between all the different combinations through zero to 100 three times. That's a lot of combinations. It would take a lot of time for me to do it manually, and that's why I built a robot. First thing I needed to do is get a motor. I chose a stepper motor. Stepper motors are great because they have a specific number of pulses per rotation. With a stepper motor, you don't have to worry about trying to keep track of the position that you're in, in terms of using an encoder or anything like that, because as long as you don't lose a step, if you say go 400 steps and it goes 400 steps for each revolution, then you know that you've gone around 360 degrees. And so if you've got a zero to 100 combination lock, then it's just a matter of every single four steps is a digit. So I had my big honking strong motor here, and that was gonna power all of the rotation needed to work the lock. Next thing I needed to do was have something that would change those pulses into the motion the motor needed. So that is what's called a stepper motor driver. And so that will take step and direction impulses and it will change it into all the special phase syncing it needs in order to move a stepper motor and get it to do the 400 pulses per revolution for me. So all I need to do is give it high and low voltage on a specific pin in order to change whether or not it wants to go forward or reverse. And then again, just pulse a pin to tell it to keep stepping in each direction, kind of like a clock clicking around. That's what this motor was doing. So what did I use to have control that with? An Arduino. Why not? $5 and I'm able to sit there and program it really straightforward and then, you know, have it do all the different things I needed to do. So with the Arduino, I also wanted to have some sort of display. When it finally got the combination, what was it going to do? Well, I found these little OLED displays 
and they're pretty awesome. They're also a couple bucks and they're able to basically then print out my combination that I got when it finally triggers. What was I using to trigger it? Well, I have this cool little mechanism that when it finally reaches the right combination, it pops a magnetic clutch and opens up this photo gate. First thing I wanted to do is design in CAD a mount for my test safe. Since I already knew what the combination for the test safe was, it was gonna be pretty easy to understand whether or not the robot was working because it would crack the safe to the right combination. So I made a little box up here and mounted the motor. And then I've got this optical brake beam sensor here and this magnetic clutch. And so you glue this knob onto the safe and it's got this awesome little track here where you can slide in and out this magnetic clutch. And this clutch is really just a whole bunch of magnets mounted in a ring in opposite polarity. So positive, negative, positive, negative. And then on the other side, it's the same deal where positive, negative, positive, negative. And they all ride on this same shaft here. And when finally you end up getting the right combination and you go to rotate the dial all the way to the right, when it finally stops, there is enough of a torque that causes these magnets to break apart. And once they go from being in attraction to repulsion, it pushes this forward and breaks the brake beam sensor. And then that alerts the Arduino that the safe has been cracked. It looks at whatever the last combination was that it had tried, and then it stops and just keeps that combination viewable so that you can then see what the combination was. Because of course, I don't want to just open the safe. I want to know the combination afterwards so that I can open it again without having to use the robot. After finishing up the CAD design, it's time to 3D print it. So I put it into Cura and basically set it up to print over a few hours. While the printer was busy, it was time to wire the whole thing up. So a little bit of solder and wire, and then I was ready to start testing. While we're waiting, if I could remind you to please like and subscribe so that I can keep making these awesome videos. Thank you. Testing the test safe took a little bit more work than I thought it was going to. Here you can see that it's basically indexing between numbers as it's trying to crack the safe. But the first thing I found out was that I always was carrying too many ones and not enough ones in my code, and so it was skipping a lot of digits, even though it was indexing correctly on the display. So here it's showing me what digits it's supposed to be hitting, and then in a minute you'll see the screen with the computer where it shows you the code that it was supposed to be entering. Eventually I was able to get all of the code sorted out and here you can see it indexing as it's trying to calculate the test safe's final combination. The most satisfying thing ever was when it finally broke the clutch and opened the test safe right here. So what's happening when you're entering the combination? Here you can see the three combination wheels rotating and there's that notch on the left there. Once you get each notch on each dial lined up, then finally they can drop in like this and then slide open the lock. Now that this test safe had been successfully cracked, it's time that I looked at making a version for the regular safe. It didn't require too much modification. A new knob and a lighter torque coupling and added some magnets into the end here to allow for it to stick onto the safe body and it was good to go. I just had to print this guy up and then see if I could get crackalackin'. So I tried all sorts of different combinations first to see if I could get it to work and I never could. But that's why I got the robot to do the work for me. So when you're programming the robot, there's a lot of different sorting algorithms you can do. But the easiest thing to think about is what are the precision of the wheels? So there's 100 digits. Do you always have to be exactly on 30, 30, 30, if that's the combo to open it, or could you be on 
31, 29, 31. In which case, how much precision do you have there? So I chose actually to do every other digit. And then I chose to do ignoring the first 10 digits and the last 10 digits. So only looking at combos between 10 and 90. And it's possible it's outside of those, but a lot of times it's not. And if it's not, well, great. I saved all that time from ignoring those numbers. I can always go back and do those numbers. So if I did every single digit, it was going to take 56 days. But by doing every other digit, then by reducing the range that I was looking at, and then by doing a special thing, which is called back dialing, back dialing allows you to do the first two digits and then try every single combination of the last digit. So you could do 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, 10, 10, 14, 10, 10, 16, et cetera. And all you do is you just dial it to the digit and then you try and open it. And if it doesn't open, you just dial back and go another couple numbers and then try and open it again. And it only takes about a 90 degree opening uh, twist, turning right to finally get it to open. We got to glue the dial mount onto the dial. So I'm going to grab my favorite green hot glue gun here and we are going to mount it onto this dial just like this and that will allow the motor to rotate the dial but also allow the coupler to slide in and out programming the display was pretty fun so i had it set up to show the last thing that was dialed in case it lost power and then you set it to a minus one on the dial in order to start your sequence so you dial the knob over to minus one and then once you have it there you just press start and then it'll start cracking the safe for you. And there it is, going to town. Just back dialing the last digit constantly, which takes about 30 seconds to back dial all of them and then it will switch to one of the first two digits. All right, this thing just popped for the first time and I'm super excited. We're gonna see if this guy opens. No, oh, it must have been a false alarm. All right, well, we're gonna try again and uh, see if we can get lucky. It's only been two hours, so maybe a couple more hours and it'll get the right combination. So one thing that I learned was that the amount of friction differs between each lock. So I had originally designed the uh, friction mechanism to work with the test safe. The problem with that was it was far too much friction for the non-test safe. And so it was actually putting more torque on the lock mechanism than it needed to. So instead what I did was made another torque mechanism here where it had less magnets. And so you can see, you know, when it's not connected, it spins freely. And then when it rotates just a little bit, it pops out. So maybe about 30 degrees gets it to pop out and then it just wants to sit there. Finally, I was able to get the safe open. Here I am super excited. All right, let's try that handle. Oh yeah, opens right up. And what do we got in there? Let's look. We've got a little bag, more bags, lots of bags. Here's a red bag. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Oh my gosh, first security money bags and, and they're locked. I didn't even know you could lock a zipper. This is the weirdest thing. Okay, what else is in here? Here, pan into here. Oh my gosh. US Denver Mint, 50 cent, $50. Wait, back up. Why is it empty? This is so uncool. Uh, crusty rubber band. Okay, that's uncool. Okay, the first money bag was locked. What do we got here? Another money bag. Oh, this one is not locked. And we've got keys. Awesome. Okay. Which one opens this money bag? Let's find out. Oh, I'm going to totally lose track of which one I've done. Oh, we got it. This little guy pops up when you do it. Oh, boo, it's empty. Okay. 
see the next one. Ooh, this one has got something heavy in it. Papery. Oh, I'm super excited. Nope. 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 Oh, of course it's the last one I had on there. Oh my gosh. What do we got? Please be money. Not money. What does this even say? Kind of close. Petty cash slips. Absolutely useless. Ah, oh, is any of this? Nope. All right. Well, we got a few more in there. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, come on. I just want like a twenty-dollar bill or something awesome. Why? Why? Why aren't you full of money? Oh. empty there's two more there's a lot wow okay come zoom in Get close just on the keys Behind door number three, nothing. Man, the last one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bupkis. Is there anything else in here cool? There is a penny in here because somebody has a sense of humor and must have put it in through the top. Well, I finally got the safe open and there was practically nothing in there. There's some really cool safety deposit bags. There was a penny, so it did have money, although the Denver Mint bag was empty and there was just a bunch of petty cash paper. But that's okay, because it was still really cool. Plus, I'd never seen those lockable envelopes with a zipper before. I didn't know you could lock a zipper like that, so that was really neat. And so with that, uh, it was pretty cool. Instead of it taking 56 days, it only took about six hours. And, you know, I got lucky, I think, with that six. It could have taken up to, you know, nine or 12 hours to do the entire amount. It only stopped twice, but I was pretty quick to get back on it. Although it was very disappointing when it didn't open the first two times. But man, on that third time, I was just so excited. It was just the best ever. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe so I can keep making more awesome videos and you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.